Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, the one good thing about this kit, and there are many good things, but the one, the one good thing about this kit is there are so many pieces in this kit that if you run across one on a print, you know, one of these, God knows how many, 133 actually, and it scares you, well then don't do it, move on. However, when you get towards the end of the build, you're going to have a very short list of a bunch of pieces, and they're all going to scare you. And this is one of them right here. This headstock gear is the Houdini of pieces on this model. This is one of those features, and I'm talking about this oblique hole right here. The 172 hole. This one up here is like the little bullpen so that you can engage the cone pulley. But this one right here is the one that locks it onto the spindle. If that hole doesn't pop out exactly in the center of that 125 thickness, you're in for a world of hurt. And as you can see, it just says 35 degree reference to clear rim. That's great. It should also say can't break out the back, can't... Uh, interfere with the undercut in here and many other things that are going to make you want to pull your hair out so that being said c note one fit at assembly right probably this is what we got to do or let's just say this is what i'm going to do this is the spindle for this little lathe this is 17 4 stainless made this last night and it's just straight up turning, so I didn't figure it was worth filming, but there it is. And yes, the nose is tapered. There you go. And for those of you that say, gee, I wish it was solid or hollow, it is hollow. So you can make long material. <laughs> you can turn extremely long shafts with this little machine. Anyway, the problem here, the problem that I see... And it shouldn't be much of a problem. So once you have the cone pulley on this thing, you have an eighth of an inch worth of space to fit a gear made from this material in that slot. These have to spin independently. Only because when it's in back gear, they're screwed together. When they're not in back gear, it's a direct drive setup. So excuse me, it's the other way around. When it's in back gear, it's not touching when it whatever what I got to do is I have to figure out a way to make a wider gear and fit it right there because I want more room at the bottom where that set screw breaks through at the angle I do not want to hit this cone pulley if you do it'll lock them together and it will completely defeat the purpose of that assembly these two, this gear, and this cone pulley must spin independently when asked to. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this cone pulley back up in the machine, and I'm going to knock the center out of it. I'm going to put a large counterbore right here, right in the middle, maybe 150, 200 deep. And when it comes time to turn the gear, I'm going to put a, a collar on the gear a hub and that hub is going to fit down inside of that recess that will allow me a greater land area so that when the oblique set screw comes through i have a tremendous amount of bite and the chance of that gear kicking is reduced considerably and it should be a whole lot easier to hit that too so the first thing i'm going to do is put this in the machine pick some arbitrary number clamp on this diameter right here this is a three-quarter diameter We'll clamp on that, indicate this, indicate the face, make sure everything is honky-dory. And I'm going to knock this center out with a small boring bar until it's just some random size. A size doesn't matter on this. All right, let's get over to the lathe. I will make some notes. I will make some chips. And I will make this work. Check off one of them things that scares you. And just for sake of showing you the spindles, because this came out really nice. And because of that assembly sequence that you just watched, if you were to key this gear with any type of keyway, 
square, round, half round pin, woodruff key, whatever, it would have to be slotted full length or you'd never get it together. This is a very unique little setup. I made a brass washer for the back of the spindle. I increased the diameter of this so it's the same size as the back of the chuck and the back of the faceplate. And when this is held tight, it spins nice. And when it's not held tight, it just spins nice as well. Okay, pop this guy into a three-quarter collet. Make a big counter bore in it. Keep fingers crossed that it doesn't uh, change anything. I don't think it will. Let's do it. And just to keep my promise, I do apologize. Sometimes parts get edited out that I am unaware of. This is the 080 diameter solid carbide boring bar that I bored the taper in the nose of the spindle and the tailstock with. And when I say 080, that's two millimeters in diameter. Let's zoom in on that for a second. Too small to focus on. This is a 1.5 millimeter 062 diameter piece of wire. So you can see how small that really is. This bar is actually probably smaller than 2 millimeters or 080, but that is the smallest diameter hole that it's recommended to bore. And I have this exact same style boring bar all the way down to 025. <laughs> and I tell you, the hardest part of using an 025 diameter boring bar is setting it on center and making sure that it's clocked this way so that it performs as it should. Anyway, there it is, guys. That is officially what an 080 boring bar looks like. Now we can do the parts. This recess in the end of the cone pulley is going to be 480 in diameter and about a quarter of an inch deep. And that means absolutely nothing. They are not specific sizes at all. I'm going to use all the surfaces on this as banking surfaces. It's got no bearing on the final outcome. All the work is done by the gear. Here we go. Yes, I will go back over this and polish this out. It's also a real good test to see whether or not the parts that you press together are truly a press fit. That four bar gets a hold of it. If it's not a good press fit, it's going to move. There we go. No movement. No problem.
Now the hub of the gear can go down in there and I have a whole lot more meat to work with. The center of this material does have the 188 required bore from a previous gear production operation. So all I needed to do was indicate the face to make sure it was running true, recheck the center hole to make sure it was running true, and now I can turn the hub on it and part it off to size. The advantage of having the hub on is if the gear is too thick, you don't have to worry too much about facing it down. You'll have a hub to grab a hold of and you'll have more room for that set screw to break through. So let's do that. there <laughs> all right quick dimensional check of the actual headstock itself for the width dimension on this I will be right back. I think you can see the advantage that a nice sharp high-speed steel tool will give you plunging across those teeth Burrs are absolutely non-existent and love it. Partnered off at 126 wide on the big side, and then I'll clean it up on some emery and check it on the headstock. Let's do it. This is the final result and I think you can see the benefit to having a wider footprint if you're going to have a screw coming in from the front. Now you have two options right now and I may exercise one of them. They tell you to put a tree pan in the front of this so that you can start your tapped hole in there and come in at an angle. Well the rejection is going to be a linear movement and I'm just kind of struggling with that. So let's take a look at the assembly. There's about 10 thou worth of clearance in there quarter of a millimeter and it fits nicely in the headstock casting itself now you can see how this has to spin independently of this it has to be able to do that that's really important there is a very good possibility, and I mean a very good possibility, that I may actually drill a small hole in the crown of the larger diameter pulley so that I can sneak an Allen wrench through it, thusly, and tighten up the set screw that will be perpendicular to the shaft. That would keep everything nice and straight. I'm struggling with that thought because I just don't want to violate the OD of this but being small like it is, and being on the crown of the pulley, it should not affect the belt tracking. The spindle does have the taper in it. For precision between center work. So I think I'm going to sleep on that. I'm going to struggle with that overnight and figure out. This may be a two-day video, although it doesn't need to be. I'm going to sleep on that. I am going to put the bullpen hole in it, threaded hole, of course, and just mess around with this dimension right here and see how that looks.
The hole could easily go on the top of the crown. Not hurt a thing. So far I like the change. The setup for drilling the set screw hole that is going to act like the bullpen is relatively simple. I have my gear up on a pair of aluminum risers held down with my little toe clamps that I use. And I'm going to indicate the center hole because that's the important feature on this, the important dimension on this part. So as soon as I drill and tap, and the reason I didn't do this in a collet, well, I just wanted to make sure that I could get the tap all the way through once the pilot hole was drilled. So we'll set up, drill and tap a 172 set screw hole on location, and then I will show you the decision that I made for this particular extended hub on this gear. I think you'll like it. Pay extremely close attention to the body of the tap versus the knurled handle and watch the twist in this area. Take a look at the, the resistance that that brass is putting on this tap. That spongy feeling is just something that's so uncomfortable. just got to go with your gut when you feel it. If you don't like the way it feels, change the tap. Check the size of the tap drill. Make sure that you have sufficient lubrication on that tap. I'm going to change to another tap. I just don't like the resistance. Anytime you're going to pick up a hole that's already got a thread started in it, turn it backwards until you feel a little gentle click. I just felt it. That means the leads are lined up and the chances of cross-threading it are slim to none. And this one here feels about 100% better, so I'm just going to go with it. And go all the way through. This is the bullpen. And the thickness of that gear has to be thicker than the length of the set screw you're going to put in this hole. Or something's going to go slap, slap, slap when you turn it on. So make sure that if this is a 1A thick gear that you use something shorter than that for whatever device you stick in here. I'm using a 330 seconds 172 set screw. Alright, take it out, clean it up, and show you the decision on the cone pulley. After some careful consideration, I have decided I am going to drill through the dome on the large diameter cone pulley and go straight down through the side here. Now the original screw that they give you in the kit is this little mouse turd looking thing right here. This is a 330 seconds long, an 093. That's about two and a quarter millimeters long. And the hub that I put on this gear will consume the entire screw, which is good. That's exactly what I wanted. This will go down through this, bite into the spindle, and I will put a flat on that spindle at a later time once I've identified where it goes. 
this particular threaded hole that I just put in here acts as bullpen to line up with that detent in the cone pulley. So when it's engaged, one drives the other, or one is uh, impaired by the other, whatever. But you can see that they do hit. Now when that hole is put in here, it does not have to be the size of the set screw, which is good. It only has to be the size of the key. So it's going to be a very small hole. I will install the set screw in the side of the pulley, assemble the pulley as such, place it, put the spindle in, come down through the cone pulley and tighten the drive gear onto the spindle. That's about the only way to do it that I can see. Just didn't feel good about coming in at an oblique angle and trusting the fact that that set screw was going to end up coming out in that area right there inside the pulley. Just not going to take that chance. I think this is a better way to go and it shouldn't be all that hard to do. So let's set it up. Easier said than done, right? This little guy here is really small. There we go. Set it up. Put a threaded hole in there. Right, it's cone pulley time. And just for sake of reference to locate the bullpen hole since it's going to be blind when this gear is installed, I am going to put the access hole for the locking screw in at 90 degrees to the bullpen and I will use that as a reference, a visual reference when looking for that should I need it. At least I have something to go by and I don't have to scuff up the front of this looking for a, a pressure difference. I'll set it up and sets in a really small hole. One millimeter hole coming through there. Very straightforward drilling operation. I am coming in exactly half of the thickness of this back elevation on center. Edge find the center of this pin. And it is a 1.2 millimeter hole I'm putting in there just to allow the Allen key to slip through and find the set screw.
Uh, let's clean it up. Take a good look at how it works. Let's take a look at the results here. Approximately 90 degrees from the bullpen hole. We have a 1.2 millimeter hole that goes through one side only. Center of the dome. On the brass drive gear itself, this particular 172 hole is two print and it matches the hole in the cone pulley placement wise. This particular hole on the side is 125 from the inside out, which is half of the thickness of this right here. And if everything lined up, I should be able to drop an Allen key through this hole on the side and have it go all the way through. There you go. Let's see if we can put something together here. Now remember, if you're going to do this, there are really no dimensions on this, but the screw that you're going to use, make sure it's consumed inside this boss right here. This diameter on the inside of the cone pulley can be much larger. It means nothing. Just don't take away the material needed for the drive hole. And that is just like nothing I'm used to working with recently anyway. Okay, I will take it subsurface. And that should be subsurface to this diameter and the inside. So it doesn't exist. Assemble it. I'm going to use a gauge pin so I don't have any opportunity to scratch up the spindle. I don't want to scratch that spindle up until I absolutely have to. See that they are currently independent. And this should be somewhere in the area where that pin is. So let's see if we can find it. Now, if all went well, these two should spin independently when I pull this out. Which they do. This gear will always drive the spindle. And only when you put the bullpin screw in and engage the cone pulley will the back gear mechanism be effective. So that's my fix, guys. That's all I'm going to do to that. This still spins really nice. I have exactly what I want. Everything's nice and straight. Spins very freely. And, yeah, I don't think that's going <laughs> to... I don't think that's going to hurt the belt tracking or performance in the least. You can blame on it what you want. You just say it's an oil hole if anybody asks, right? But remember, in the world of surgical instrument design, and that's where I'm from, 
when you put a hole in to allow an instrument to be lubricated or cleaned, you also allow dirt and grime to get in. So be very generous or uh, conservative with features like that. You know, if oil can get in, then dirt can get in. So be careful about that. Anyway, that's all I got. I think we're getting a little bit closer than we were. I am very pleased with this guy right here. I think that's a great fix. If you have one of these kits, you might want to try it. Thank you very much for watching. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.